thought I'd make a video to highlight my uh, awesome new widescreen arcade. So I've been building so many of these recently that I haven't had a chance to update them on the website. There's my narrow arcade there. I call it the narrow arcade now, but that's the more traditional narrow arcade. This is one I'm working on vertical layout. It's going to be a bit of a prototype. Uh, but over here, this is the new widescreen model. That's uh, the new hotness. Everybody's, everybody wants this one. Uh, a few things worth, worth highlighting that I'll try to go through quickly now. This is all going to be one take, so hopefully I don't get it too wrong. Um, what we've got here is a widescreen. So this guy's 27 inches. Um, and this guy, the original one, was is 19. Now that obviously works for the traditional arcades and so on. This is great. Um, all the traditional arcade games, you know, these guys, these guys boot up. If I just go into Capcom here and I pick a, you know, one of the Street Fighters, if I scroll down all the way down to it, yeah, um, here we go. Right, so let's fire up the same one. Street Fighter 2, the new challenges. Sweet. All right, and we'll go over here. And we'll get Street Fighter, the new challenges over here, just to give you a bit of an idea. Uh, where have I got fighters? There we go. We'll go up this time, just to make it easy. Nearly there. Here we go. Okay, so it's a widescreen. No surprises there. Now the thing about the widescreen is, is it's better for two adults to stand side by side. You've got a much larger gap here in the center. There's a couple extra buttons here, which I'll get to in a sec. Um, but this extra gap in between helps two of us big boys to stand next to each other and uh, thrash it out. These guys are awesome, but they're more they're more for kids. You know, there's a bit of shoulder charging action going on here when you play Street Fighter with each other. Um, this is this is actually the original gap between the two arcades in the early '90s the, between the two players. But you know, people forget. You know, we're all teenagers at the time, and so it didn't feel like a a, a small gap. But over here. You know, this is much more modern, what we're more comfortable with these days, uh, fighting it out. Now, in terms of the aspect, I mean, this is a full width 19 inch, right? So I've just got my tape measure here. There's, you can see the 19, it's upside down, but it's a 19, 19 inch to edge there. And now on this guy here, sorry for the whiz pen, no, don't try, try to vomit too much. This guy, when I go edge to edge, let's get it right, it's actually 21. You can see there. So it's a it's a bigger monitor. Um, you know, it's it's 27 inches diagonally, edge to edge. So when you play the new the new modern stuff like you know Street Fighter, Street Fighter Five and all that sort of stuff, she's 27 inches. Um, but the more traditional aspect is is still larger, right? So it's 21 inches. Now back in the day, most CRT monitors would only be sort of 21 inches. Um, you know, in an arcade, 19 and 21 inches. That's that's all it was. So this is actually really good. Um, and as you can see, I've kept the the screen edge and the uh, and the scan lines to match the original CRT look and feel, which makes the graphics just absolutely they just pop, they just pop. It's it's crazy. Um, so that's the screen. Now let's talk about controls. So with the widescreen, I completely recoded the entire front end, every, all of Mame, all the emulators, every game, uh, the whole lot to work with Xbox instead of direct import. Now that's really geeky, but all you need to know is you don't need to muck around with it. There's no switches or dials or anything you need to do when you flick in between emulators. Um, if I just quit out of this, um, the way that you quit is you just hold down uh, the coin and the blue button, works on both sides. Oh no, sorry, start. You'd think I'd get that right by now. Um, and there's a little hint here how to do it, hit start and button three to go back to the game menu. That works with both players. It's just on the player two, I can do it with one hand. Um, yeah, so the, the interface itself, all the categories, all the games, they all work. And, you know, just to prove it, if I go into a PC game and fire up something like this, um, it recognizes it straight away as a, as a controller. We're ever a controller. Funny that it is. Um, so, uh, yeah, if I just skip the intro, um, you'll see, see that A there? Ta-da! Because it's all recognized as an Xbox controller. So there's your little map there, so you can glance at it just to, just to get going. Let's just quit out of this. So, bunch of PC games on here that can only work with the widescreen. Um, uh, awesome. There's hours and hours and hours of fun in this. Um, we'll not go into it too much, but 
you know, they've all got their own, their own little intros. Steam integration. Now this is something that the narrow one definitely doesn't have. So this, you can add your own games. So you go into Steam, it automatically launches into Steam, Steam mode. As usual, there's a bloody Steam update. <laughs> We're not doing the video. But it'll do it. Oh, actually, it's a good segue. So each one of my widescreen arcades comes with one of these, like a really good, a really good trackpad uh, keyboard wireless, so that you can, you can get it all happening. Now the thing is with this is that you know on the odd occasion where you need to type in a password or a login or get it happening, you can you can use this. Um, the Wi-Fi dongles in the the keyboard pad dongles inside the machine itself, so you don't have to worry about that. And look, if you want to add any extra storage options because you've decided to download your entire Steam library on here, there's a Wi-Fi hub here. At the front, yeah, and that works with additional Xbox controllers as well. So if you want to play like a four-player game or something like that, like you can, no problem. I'm just going to quit out of this. Um, exit city. Cool. Back into the emulators, into the front end, sorry, which is all good. Um, now I've added a whole lot of extra stuff here. I recoded all of this. This is not MAME. I'm oh, sorry. This is not um, Hyperspin. It's not RetroArch. It's not any of those kind of front ends. This is a very old school front end called Big Blue. Um, that I recoded entirely so that it didn't look like an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, but the benefit of this is it's crazy light. It doesn't use any system resources. You could have this on for like 14 hours and it would still be walk up, touch the joystick, away you go. It's not going to crash. It's not going to go to screensaver. Uh, nothing's going on here. Uh, some additional niceties. Um, I've got a new category for three and four player games. These guys are configured so that you can put a third and fourth player uh, controller in here and you can actually play them like you know player one is was always the what is it Leonardo and player two is always Donatello and player three is always Raphael you know that sort of thing or you can go into the obviously you know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is in here as well where you can you know choose your character you know two, two characters you choose your character which is fine um Oh, if I can find it. God, there's a lot of games on here. Mm, scroll quickly. See, that's the other thing about this front end. Like, there's no crazy animations or anything going on like Hyperspin where you, it takes you ages to find your game. You know, you're like, clock, 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 and it spins in and out, and it's, you know, it sometimes gets wigs out if you go too fast, or you need to use search options or anything. These are all just alph alph alphabetized. Yeah, alphabetical. Um, so you can find them. So if I go into Ninja Turtles. Oh, come on, camera. Focus, there we go, back in. Okay, so it does the usual boot up like the original arcade did. And then like I said, I recoded MAME to work entirely with uh, Xbox controller, so you don't have to like switch any dials or change the modes of any joysticks, it just works straight away. So if I chuck a coin in here, you know, it, I can choose my character, so I press start, there it is. I can choose who I wanna be, you know, no probos. Um, but the four-player version, you know, it would be dedicated because the original arcade had like four players that were fixed to certain characters. Anyway, it's a bit geeky, but it is what it is. Um, I'll just quit out again. And, you know, there's no uh, progress bar animations, you know. that These PCs inside here are proper gaming PCs, you know. There's a, a decent graphics card and everything going on in there, so there's no need to, you know, be weird about progress bars when these old MAME games load really quickly anyway. I mean... All those sort of progress loading bars and things are just getting in the way of the actual game launching itself. Um, Nintendo. So this is old school Nintendo, right? So, so not all of these games have aged well. So I've only selected the games that, you know, everybody knows and loves. Not all of them, you know, some of them best left off in your mind, honestly. You know, don't. Don't kid yourself, you know. Oh, the other thing is that, uh, so, you know, back in the day when you'd leave your, your Nintendo on for weeks at a time so, or days at a time over the school school days so that you could come back on the weekend and continue where you left off. So these guys um, automatically, well, it's one of the options. You can, you can have it so that, let me see if I can jump this gap with one hand. Yes. Okay. You can have it so that when I quit out, see that turtle was just about to kill me. Um, and I'll come back to that game, I'll be just about to die again. There we go, dead, perfect. <laughs> but that's a setting, you can turn it on and off, you know, because obviously you, you don't want to leave the whole arcade running for weeks or days at a time just so that you can save your progress. So that's one of the niceties that I've put in. And also to match the crappy TVs of back in the day, see, I've put in the original TV scan lines so that overall... 
the whole thing just the graphics just pop again and so i've taken that extra care to make sure that the emulators really replicate the way that it used to be um so that's classic nintendo for you um there's some super nintendo on there oh, all of super nintendo except for any of the laser guns pew 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 um same with mega drive there's a full mega drive except for the anything that had mega drive used to have that um they actually did they had a laser gun and it was it was weird it only worked for a few of them but all the awesome games are in there. Game Boy Advance. Now, there's actually some... Obviously, the Game Boy Advance had a tiny screen. But actually, some of them are, are, are awesome. Um, you know, so I put uh, just a handful on here. I think there's only sort of 20-odd games uh, on here. But they're, they're a lot of fun. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the settings. This is where you can go through and change this, the... You know, what's called auto-load. Like, where you quit and then come back and it's exactly where you were before. Um, you can turn them on and off uh, per emulator, that sort of thing. But... You know, I like to kind of... Do. This one's for the Super Geeks. And this Perfect Pixel. So if I select that, one-to-one -one Perfect Pixel, that's changed that setting now. So that if I go into uh, an old-school arcade game... Let's just, get, let's just pick one. Okay, Street Fighter Alpha. So this is going to change the way that it appears on the screen. So that if you're, a, I don't know, a, an arcade aficionado, I guess, or someone that's like really... I don't want to say precious, but really cares about how the graphics are supposed to appear. Um, the one to one pixel perfect ratio means that there's no scaling or stretching going on. This this will come out exactly how it is. And you can see it's 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 not taking advantage of the full size screen. It's not stretching. It's it's the exact proportions and ratios that it used to be. So you can play this um, at that setting if that really works for you. Um, you know, which is great. I mean, that's why I have it included. I mean, some people really love this and it's really sharp and really tight. Um, or, that's going to say it's Street Fighter Alpha. I'll go back and I'll change it again. You'll see the difference. Oh, one more up. So I'll change it back to 4x3 standard aspect. And then if I go into fighters again, Street Fighter Alpha. So it's still the right aspect ratio, but it's stretched it. Now, I mean... You feel free to Google this, but you can see that not always can a pixel be a perfect square. It will be like a bit of a rectangle or it will be like one and a half pixels wide and not exactly one pixels wide. Um, so you get a little bit of a, a fuzz. But you know what? I mean, hey, this is a proper LG, you know, 45 hertz monitor. It looks tight. So that's all good. Uh, what else with the widescreen? Um, it's got LEDs underneath. Uh, you know that you can change the color in the back. Um, it's got... The kick-ass custom graphics on the side. Uh, there's a black one that is, is, is also going out today. There's a blue one. I love the Capcom blue myself. You can get it in all the different colors. Uh, you know, I've got a whole lot of different graphics options for the top and the bottom. Uh, what else? Um, oh, these joysticks. Imported from Spain. <laughs> you can't get these joysticks, uh, as far as I'm aware, in Australia anywhere. These are... The original joysticks as were made in the arcades across Europe and the US back in the day. So what happened is, um, you know, uh, as things progressed, the company that was making uh, the arcade sticks was uh, sold an exclusive license to another company in the US to manufacture the joysticks. Um, and of course, over time, those joysticks that were manufactured in the US degraded in quality. But the original arcades that were the original arcade joysticks that were manufactured in Spain um, maintained their high quality joysticks. And then that was an exclusive license, so they weren't able to sell them to the US. Long story. Point is, these are the original ones um, that are crazy tight. Um, and I think I've got one here. Let me see if I can just back this up. Yeah, I do. So I've got one here, and the, the telltale difference is that white. That white nylon and the cherry switches. So that white nylon in there is all internal. This joystick is white nylon as well, which means that as nylon and nylon rubs on itself, it creates this natural, natural lubrication. And the overall manufacturing quality of these guys is head and shoulders above any competition or any hap style joysticks that you'll see around. Cause these guys were the originals. Um, and also, Green and grey, awesome. You can't get those colours in the other one. Um, okay, so this, this arcade here... This guy's not turned on yet. So look, I'll turn it on so you can see how long it takes to... Oh, wrong, wrong side. God, you know. You think I'd better get this right by now. All right, there you go. I've clicked it on. So you see there's never any... 
Never any Windows action going on, any rando wind Windows logins or anything. Um, it just gives you, that's the monitor and the motherboard, just going, hey, we're, we're Asus stuff. And you know, there might be an LG logo here and there. Um, that's the monitor, but that's it. And then it will boot up into the menu. Um, so you don't have kids that are like, got to remember passwords or you don't need the keyboard or the wireless keyboard or anything to go with it. Um, you know, she's, she's, she's gravy. Here it is. Doot, doot, doot. It's good stuff. Now, um, what else? Now that this one's booted up fresh, what can I tell you? Um, oh, Naomi. Actually, yeah, right. So it took me ages to get these working. These are some very, very loved, very, very loved uh, games. Guilty Gear. So um, people that know, that's the emulator booting up. People that know uh, about fighting games know that, um, or the emulator community know that these bad boys are uh, crazy difficult to, to get working. Um, and not only have I got them working, I've got them working with the original... Let me zoom in here. Oh, you can see me in the reflection. Um, let me see. Here we go. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I've got them working with the original scan lines the way that they were working back in the day so that the graphics are just absolutely... <laughs> Sound like some sort of Italian chef. But... It's very sharp. So these are, these are great, great games. Oh, volume. So the widescreen arcade has a lot more space for decent speakers. So this guy's got some really booming speakers going on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whilst we're on the focus of that. This guy, because I've got a widescreen, I was toying around with some cool ideas. This guy's got um, video jukebox mode, video player. So it'll just randomly play. I've got a folder on the, on the desktop, which I'll show you in a sec, um, which just randomly plays videos. You can, you can skip through them. Like this. These are just some game trailers and things that I sucked down off the internet. Um, and while we're there, turn this volume up so you can. We can have dueling, dueling arcades. Where's a good one? There we go. This is the League of Legends stuff. But you might want to have a bunch of promo videos or things like that that you run, or just you know some videos for the kids or something like that. Or some movies that you like and you can skip through them. You press any button like the yellow one and it just like quits back to the to the loop. And on that, um, this is just to just to show you what's going on behind the scenes here. You get your it comes with one of these bad boys, you hit escape on this, and you can scroll down to the to the exit menu, which I'll try and do with one hand. There we go. And look behind the scenes, she's Windows 10. So look, this is where it's Wi-Fi enabled. You can update your stuff. I often send out updates and uh, you know show people what's going on. This is where you can download videos for your video player and you can put them in that video folder there so that they work forever. This is where you can sort your Steam login in and this is where you can launch your big blue front end. Um, but like you just saw with the black arcade, as soon as you turn it on, it goes into the front end anyway. Um, so that's good. So just to show you what's going on here, if I just, if I just turn it off and hopefully I've got the right side, yeah. So it just turns off when it powers down. Oh, and the black one's a bit noisy, so I'll turn that one off as well. So that's it. Turns off. LEDs stay on because for a bit, because you know whether the when you've got a USB connected to the PC, it stays powered on for a bit. Um, press it on again. Anyway, so the kids can easily just turn it on and off, or you know, you got teenagers, whatever, turn it on and off. Um, it does its thing. This is where you'd normally see the Windows 10 login and all that kind of crap going on, but you don't see any of that. Um, because you know, you want to keep it as smooth as possible. Come on camera, focus. There we go. Here it is. And she just works. Uh, truck loads are fun. <laughs> Turn that down, it's a bit loud. Um, yeah, so look, I hope you enjoy the widescreen arcade. Um, I love making them. I love bringing the old school feel of arcades into people's homes. Um, 
and they're a hell of a lot of fun and they're all made with high quality tech, obviously glass. Um, and yeah, enjoy. Uh, feel free to drop me a line and I'll put this up on the website and uh, it's a 20 minute long video, but hope you like it.